Last month on Patreon I launched a challenge about historical composition. Three of you sent me a composition, a video or a score and in this video I want to show your works to all my audience here on YouTube. I really like to make these composition challenges because by doing this we can learn together, I can learn something by you, you can learn something by a work of some other one and this is the best way of learning sharing works in my opinion. For that, if you want to take part of these challenges and if you want to help me in creating more content like this because every video requires a lot, lot of time, imagine around 10 times of the duration of the video you watch, you can really help me and have in return the access to a lot of many other exclusive contents like PDFs and improvisation element videos with a little but important and fundamental contribution on Patreon. And now let's talk about this video. We have Nelson from France, Christian from China and Daniel from USA. They brought three different pieces in different styles and in this video we're gonna show their words and comment them. So enjoy! Let's start with Nelson. This piece doesn't have a title, doesn't have a written style. I think this is like a corrente. But first of all, let's listen how it sounds. Okay, it's not really simple for a sight rhythm because there are not rests. Okay Nelson, I really like your piece, your composition, but there are a little things that, in my opinion, can be improved for having a better and more effectively version. The first improvement we can make is in the first sequence. Listen to it. You made a really beautiful pattern for the sequence, really, really, really beautiful. And now my ear wants the same but in major. So, so in this point I need to have the same beautiful pattern with this. This is the three interval. So four, two, three is really beautiful and I need the same in major. So you can do this, adding a measure. You can play at this measure as a conjunction. Okay, so I play another time slower. Now, the second improvement is at bar 13. Listen. I don't find this passage really effective because you go on the fifth degree of the chord and usually the fifth degree wants to go up. This is weak if it goes down. So you can have two possibilities, in my opinion. In this way, so listen your version and my version. Mm -hmm. 
because of the fourth leap, fourth ascending leap, and because of the fundamental note of the chord, this passage now is stronger. And it is what the corrente wants. Okay? Another thing you can do is use the chromatics. If you want. But I think that is more proper of this of your composition, the bass leap. Because you have another bass leap here and not the chromatics. So this was the second improvement. Now the third improvement is in the following notes in the arpeggio is starting from the bar 16 with the right hand. You brought this. Okay. You jump to the seventh. I know that this is a passing tone. So it's correct. But in my opinion, for not having this dissonance that we can hear that is harsh. This is better. Now let's listen to your version and another version with this improvement. This was your version that is good, it's not wrong, but I prefer using 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 4 thirds like a 7th chord, okay, in an arpeggio. The fourth improvement is at bar 36. What I don't like in this bar is the succession of three nines. Okay, you also have an A flat and a natural A. This is not actually a problem because the upper A, natural A, is going up and the lower A flat is going down. Okay. But what I don't like is the succession of three dissonances that are the same number, so 9, 9 and 9, in the same direction. Okay, for example, let's take this passage, really common in, in Johann Sebastian Bach. This is acceptable because we have two harsh dissonances but different, 7, 9 and then another chord, but the underlying harmony is this, okay? So it works, we have three harsh dissonances but different numbers. In your example we have three dissonances with the same number. For example, a thing you can do is change, for example, the bass in this way. but different numbers okay this is another important thing use different numbers and the last improvement we can do in your piece is at the end in the penultimate bar you wrote I know that the, the bass is ascending with the natural A and the melody is ascending with the A flat but I don't really like too much this a natural A against A flat in this point. Because in this case, they are not together. In your previous example, they are not together. But in this passage, they are together. So we can use the same note, natural and flat, together with a lot of attention. What you can do that is 
more chantable in the middle voice is the following passage. For example. And it works. We have in this case a dissonance where we leap. Okay, nine. But we can listen in the harmony that this note is like an appoggiatura. Okay, so it doesn't belong to the harmony. Okay, let's play the final crescenza with this improvement. Good. Now, let's listen to the piece by Christian from China. Christian sent me a video, not a score of his composition, so I can't comment too much his composition. But he wrote during the editing of his video the pattern he used. Let's listen to it. Christian not only made a video about his composition, but he also made a review of my activity on pattern and improvisation elements. So, Christian, I really appreciated this thing because I am doing really a hard work for sharing all the possible knowledge about composition, early music, improvisation, to all people that can learn from musical academies, from, from conservatories or other, or from other parts. So I appreciate your contribution because every single little help is not a help to me, but is a help to all people who want to learn all these things, because they allow me to make more video, find someone for helping me in more professional editing, in this way, I have more time for recording more videos for you and you can have much more content. So now, let's listen to the piece by Christian. Hello, YouTubers. My name is Christian and I'm a music teacher living here in China. I specialize in teaching Partimento, an 18th century composition and improvisation to young kids. In this video, I want to talk about not only why I think you should join the Calgus Patreon page, but why improvisation is important at all these days as a musician. With the rediscovery of Partimento, the development of Galant Schemata and the increased interest in thorough bass, much due to the fact that we have discovered that Bach regarded thorough bass as crucial in his teachings, we are experiencing nothing less but a 18th century music renaissance at the moment. Why does this matter for us musicians? Well, in the 18th century, improvisation was essential for any musician. But in modern times, improvisation has taken a backseat. However, with the revival of 18th century music, finally, improvisation is becoming important again. So not only will learning improvisation make you become a more versatile and creative musician, but it's also crucial in this time of revival of 18th century music. Recently, there was a book released that is teaching people how to improvise fugues. Some people of you probably know which book I'm talking about. And people now are learning how to improvise fugues. What a great times to be a musician, right? Join Ricardo's Patreon page and join this revival. His channel is the only channel that will give you access to this content for that good price. There are other teachers, uh, some on YouTube, some outside YouTube that can teach you this, but you have to take private classes with them and it will cost some money and some of them they are even too busy to even have the time to give you classes but if you join Ricardo's Patreon page as I did for a cup of coffee a month I have access to all this material and all the PDFs from his YouTube videos for me that's great it gives me access to a lot of information uh, for a good price it's always available when I have the time I just check out the information and I can also get in touch with Ricardo himself. So thanks for watching and hope to see you on Patreon soon.
list yet. Actually, I can't say a lot of things because this is a video, I don't have the score, but I really liked your composition. Your piece is different from the work that Nelson did because you made more like a mashup than a composition. So you didn't want to make any, a real historical composition because you used some sequences and to cut style at the beginning. So it is more like a baroque pattern mashup and what you did works good. There are a few things, for example, some movements in the left hand that sometimes with their syncopation are not properly in the style. But in the work you did, they work good. And now let's pass to the last piece, a minuet. This piece is in G major, let's listen to it. Really good, Daniel. Really good. There are a lot of things that I want to say to you. For example, your piece, uh, compared to the piece of Nelson, is much more simple because you didn't use complex figuration, complex riff. This is a minuet, really a simple minuet in Gala style. But you used properly a lot of things. For example, the melody, really simple. is balanced in four measure as the minuet wants. And then we have four measure, four measure, four and four, then the refrain, then four, four, four and four. So the minuet is balanced. You also use the triplet, really good. I really like your sequence. Okay, then the printer is not complete printer in the bass. It is a commission between a printer or a cadence, but what I showed you in the video about the printer that we can find a printer in a version really similar to a cadence. In this way. We have all the parts of the melody of the printer, six, five, three, two, and the bass, and in the bass we don't have the two, but it is a printer or better and a nested printer on a cadence. Okay, then we have the sequence. And then the cadence really, really, really gallant. Gallant, the key word of this piece is gallant. Really beautiful what you did, so this is the end of the melody. And the cadence is played another time by the bass. And then the Romanesca starts again in the major. Printer. Okay, now look how Daniel used this sequence with a scale in the bass. And this note with staccato in the melody and how he used these two elements inverted in the second part. So let's listen it in the, in the first part. And now in the second part. Good, let's go on. Now at this point you used a fonte that was not written in the challenge, but you did well because after the refrain, the, in the middle, has ripple says, we can use a fonte. And you take the main melody of the minuet plus the staccato 
a good really connection and combination. Composition in the Gallant period, in the Baroque period, is not the art of inventing something new, but it's more like an art combinatoria, the art of combining elements. So even this piece is really simple in its structure and counterpoint, you really combine well all the elements. <laughs> And, you can, and we can see also an imitation between the bass and the right hand, and the melody. Now we have the inverted uh, sequence. And at this point, like a reprise with the main melody. Printer. Quiescenza, now be careful because it is a quiescenza that finishes with a cadence. Um, we have the, all the elements of the quiescenza, so G, underline in the first bar, then the natural F, then we have the 6, then we have the 7, and the last note, the R that belongs to the crescenza. The bass is different of a common crescenza, so we don't have the same bass with G, G, G and G. We have an ending like a cadence, okay? But it works because using a crescenza at this point in a minuet will be hard and stronger. Not, it is not coherent to the chantable and the gallant mood of this minuet. So you did a good choice. Good. And this was the composition challenge of this month of January. Today, when you will have already watched this video on YouTube, you can find the post on my pattern of the new composition challenge of February and I'll make a video of this composition at the beginning of March. You can also find the post here in the description. So have you a nice day and see you in next videos. Bye! If you have been watching this video up to the end, I bet you too are fascinated by the world of partimenti, improvisation and historical composition. For us musicians of the 21st century, it's important and fundamental to know these techniques and the way in which the great master of the past used them artfully to compose the extraordinary music we play today. If you master these patterns, you can better understand and interpret what you play. You can compose new music based on these patterns and you can improvise new music from scratch because you know the grammar of this musical language. For that I created improvisation elements, a set of several improvisation exercise videos for each of which you can download a PDF to practice whenever you want. Improvisation Elements is an ambitious project and is reserved for those who support my work on Patreon. Every week I upload new Improvisation Elements videos on different topics, sequences, scales, cadences and more. All these videos are organized at the following page. So now subscribe a membership on Patreon, choose the exercise you want to practice and become an improviser.